What we thought we'd do for the next uh, hour and a quarter is actually do something a little different than what we've done in the past. Um, since we've been going for quite a few years, uh, we thought we'd uh, take a look back at um, what we've been doing in terms of developing our, our energy research and the technologies, and also look forward. And so um, we've invited some of our uh, PIs who have uh, really made a very big contribution to GSEP over the years and asked them to, to share with us their perspectives on the, the advancements that have been made in GSEP and where they're going in the context of their research fields. And so the plan that we have for today is to, um, I will give you a little bit of a, an overview and then I will ask uh, Tom Yawamillo who has been uh, an outstanding researcher at, at uh, Stanford, uh, working in the area of renewable fuels and catalysis. And he will give his perspective, and followed by uh, Mike McGeehy, professor from uh, material science and engineering. And he will also talk about what's been happening in the solar PV field uh, at GSAP. And then tomorrow, It'll be tomorrow afternoon from 2.15 to 3.15. We'll have two more PIs. We'll have uh, Yi Chui uh, uh, speak on batteries and energy storage. And then we'll also have um, from Purdue University, Clint Chapel speak on a bio, biomass conversion and the work that they've been doing in Lignin. So typically in these meetings, we have these uh, technical sessions and they're more focused for those that really want to deep dive into the, into the technical um, specifics of an area. But these, these talks will be much more at a higher level, more for a larger audience like we're having here. So let me begin by giving a little bit of a, a background on, on GSEP for those that, that don't, you don't know the program so well. I'll be quite brief. Um, We've been going, uh, we were started in 2002, it was December 2002, so we're actually nearly 14 years we've been going, and um, it's funded by uh, industry, industrial sponsors, big industry corporations, and over the years we've had uh, six industry sponsors. Our biggest sponsor has been ExxonMobil, and together with them at the beginning were GE, Toyota, and uh, Stamberger. And um, over the years, we've also had DuPont join and Bank of America join. And uh, so we've had as many as six sponsors uh, for GSEP. Um, the mandate that we had was really to do research in low greenhouse gas emission energy supply. So we're really looking primarily at the energy supply technologies. And of course, these companies all have very strong research programs of their own. But we really wanted to look at uh, focusing on the fundamental and pre-commercial research that uh, universities are strong at. And because we're looking at that type of research, we were looking for applications quite far out into the future, into the sort of 10 to 50 year time frame. And so the strategy that we followed was really to look for research projects on technologies that have the potential for significant impact in greenhouse gas emissions at a sort of global scale. We were really looking for breakthroughs in, um, in these technologies. And so, but we had a lot of funding, but we didn't, but it's difficult to get our hands around what we, um, you know, what we could do. And so we went with this strategy of really looking at high risk, high reward. And I know you've heard this time, several times before, but we really, we were, were given a lot of funding and then we could actually take that funding and really try and spread it across the whole energy space. And we really wanted to try and give the freedom to the university researchers to really try and, and come up with their most creative ideas. So um, we did work about two thirds of the work was done at Stanford, but actually a good third of it was done outside universities. And uh, this map here shows some of the universities around the world that have participated in GSEP. Um, our inaugural uh, director was uh, Lynn Orr, who now is at the Department of Energy, and his deputy was, uh, was uh, Chris Edwards. And um, around 2007, I believe, then Sally Benson came in and uh, 
she took over a, a couple of years later. So just a few quick statistics on, on GSEP. So as I said, about $200 million was committed to the project. Um, we went back and we looked, we probably have, we've issued uh, 24 solicitations for proposals. That's the way we um, operated and uh, received 309 proposals over 12 years. And we've actually funded exactly 100 major research programs. Um, and it's resulted, uh, you know, from a scientific standpoint, we've had many publications, over 800 publications in peer-reviewed journals and 1,200, over 1,200 papers presented at meetings. Um, we did a little analysis of um, where we, uh, what, how good our publications were from 2010 to 2015. And what you can see from this little box here on the top right-hand corner is that um, we got many citations. So they, there's the field-weighted citation impact. That's sort of a measure of how well the work that we have uh, published. Um, it's got a, a, a number that's actually 5.23, so around five. On average, it's one. So really, they were cited probably five times better than uh, most than the average for publications. And, a typical, and on average, they were cited uh, 50 times. Um, of the GSEP uh, publications during that period, um, nearly 60% were published in the 10% 10, 10 of most cited uh, um, publications. So um, I think that was um, that's some sort of measure of how well the science has gone in GSEP. Our most highly cited paper is by Yi Chui on uh, his, uh, his battery, his nano um, technology for, for, for lithium batteries, and that's uh, it's been cited over 3,000 times, and I think that number is still going up now. And we'll hear from Yi tomorrow. Um, we've also developed over 60 technologies and had 15 patents issued. Um, I think one of the big main products that we have coming out of GSEP is really the students. And we've had over 800 graduates and students and postdocs uh, passing through the project. So let me just say a word or two about um, the imp how we've uh, been made an impact at GSEP. And I should say that we've had a number of conversations with uh, GSEP PIs. And some of what I'm going to present is actually uh, we've heard from, from these PIs. So I think that one of the challenges was how do we address this big energy issue? And how can we do it with this big, it requires a big picture approach and finding game-changing solutions. And so it was a stretch for the faculty. They, at the time we, we began GSEP, faculty were really focusing on their individual areas. And we asked them to take a, a multidisciplinary sort of a view, systems view of energy. And we did um, a lot of systems analysis. This exergy assessment that we did here on the global energy system is an example of that. And the other point I would make is that um, GSEP was a lot of money, it was a large scale project, but we needed something of that size really to start searching for the solutions across this broad energy space. Um, one other thing I just mentioned there that we can see this multidisciplinary approach from the fact that, um, you know, we had 80% uh, of our research programs actually had multiple PIs where they collaborated together and actually. 25% of our projects also had multiple institutions. So it wasn't all just um, PIs within Stanford. They were also with people from other institutions. GSIMS also had a big impact at uh, Stanford. Um, I think, firstly, in terms of the energy community, um, it's really had a big impact in, in faculty recruitment. And a number of the speakers you'll be hearing from were recruited partly because GSEP was here. So the fact that um, this program existed, it meant that the departments and the schools um, recruited faculty in areas that were associated with energy. Uh, energy courses, there's around 400 energy courses that uh, take place at Stanford, a far bigger number than existed uh, when GSEP began. And I think it's also spurred a huge amount of uh, student interest. Uh, an example would be the uh, Student Energy Club, which is, uh, I think, the most popular energy club on the Stanford campus. 
Um, the, uh, I think the other impact it's had is in terms of the research areas of expertise. Over the years, we've developed, I think, centers of excellence in certain research areas. And it's not just been the GSET money that came in, but it's also all the follow-on money that came afterwards. And I think GSEP take, should take a lot of credit for the fact that we've got to this point. And I'm hoping that today you'll hear, and tomorrow you'll hear some of the, the evidence for that. Um, the third impact uh, on, on Stanford, I think, is the ecosystem that's been created on the campus. Um, it's not just been in the technology areas, but a, across the whole, all the issues of energy from the technology to the finance to the policy, the behavior, and so on. Um, there's a whole set of centers, the whole ecosystem that, uh, that uh, now exists on the uh, Stanford campus. And not all of it was due to GSEP, but GSEP certainly had an influence on that. And we now have the Precourt uh, Institute for Energy, which really is this umbrella organization that oversees everything going on at Stanford. The impact was not just, of course, at Stanford. It was also beyond Sta uh, Stanford. And um, as I mentioned, we've had a, a number of sponsors. And it's had some impact on them. Uh, with the, uh, I think some of them have really been uh, quite good at recruiting some of our graduates, and that they could have the biggest impact on energy over the next uh, 40 years or so. Um, we gave them some early awareness of, of energy trends that they wouldn't have, under, wouldn't have known about, maybe, if they weren't uh, supporters of, of GSEP. And we also had a lot of, com we've had a lot of conversations with our sponsors. Um, we've had a number of CEOs come and visit uh, Stanford. And hopefully it's, it's managed to inform the companies of, of the strategic directions, at least give them some more information that would help them as they set their strategic directions. Um, uh, GSAP has also been a pioneer in, in supporting energy research. And it's really served as a model for a number of new big centers that didn't exist uh, when it started, and some examples would be the Joint Center for Artificial Photosynthesis, which was a direct outlet, actually, of GSET research. Um, ARPA-E is a different model, but the DOE program, it, it has many of the features that uh, GSEP has, and uh, another example may be Kaust uh, in Saudi Arabia. And um, another example of the impact that we've had beyond Stanford, I think, is the, is the entrepreneurial uh, community. We've really, uh, a number of startup companies have begun inspired or based upon the research that's been done at GSEP. And actually this afternoon, you'll have the opportunity to um, meet some of those companies uh, as we have a, a showcase of some of those technologies. Um, on the technical side, um, we've really invested in a, in a broad portfolio, and you can sort of see how we've, uh, how our, our funding has been spread across a whole set of, of technical areas. Um, but in some cases, this has actually developed whole new technical fields. And I, I give a couple of examples here. Um, for example, we, we funded one project, which we call PEAT, the Photon Enhanced Thermionic Emission. And it was a bit of a crazy idea when it first began about eight or nine years ago. The idea was actually to come up with a system that would um, that would um, convert both the heat and the light of solar energy, both, both components, in a single system. And um, it actually worked uh, very well, spectacularly well. And this has now developed into a whole new field. Uh, there's workshops and uh, you know, dozens of groups around the world working on this concept. Another example would be in the area of microbial electrochemistry. And this was begun by um, Alfred Sporman. We funded some of the initial work on this. And again, there are workshops. There was a workshop just uh, last month in this area. And um, again, it's had many, many groups around the world now working in this field. So um, this is probably my, my last slide, because um, I'm going to turn it over to the, to the, to the faculty who are working in these areas. But, um, this sort of qualitatively shows uh, 
what we've done in advancing the energy technologies. We've made real advances in, in some of these major areas. And it's not just been the GCEP advances, it's also been the follow-on funding that we've got. And we've moved things along. And really, GCEP, I think, enabled a lot of this to happen. And it, it supported it and then enabled the follow-on to happen. And so that's where, where we are right now. We hope to, to see this continue, both at Stanford and outside of Stanford and in the general uh, research space. And so with that, um, I, will, I will stop and then I will turn over the...